Among the hundreds of thousands of refugees entering Europe, a large part is made up of young men from Afghanistan, leading to this basic question, why? Here's a part of that explanation. In the Koti Sangi neighborhood of Kabul, these men are waiting for work. It's a scene repeated throughout the capital as thousands of casual workers hope to earn a dollar or more a day. A sign of Afghanistan's deteriorating economy, the desperation etched on their faces. They sit with the tools of their trade, some skilled, some not. Painters, carpenters, plasterers, manual workers, waiting for someone to come by and hire them, even if only for a few hours. But their chances aren't good. These men don't have the family or political connections often needed to get a job here. And unemployment in Afghanistan is estimated at 40% or higher. A large informal economy makes it difficult to get exact statistics. This Kabul market is busy, but everyone here says business is down. Afghanistan's economy still depends heavily on international aid. 61% of the country's operating budget is funded by foreign donors. Today on Talk to Al Jazeera, we will examine the actual job market in Afghanistan. How does it really work, and what jobs, if any, offer some sort of future for young people who decide to stay here? They sit outside the Afghan parliament, young men who want jobs, and they vow to stay here until something is done. Evidence of the unemployment problem right here. This is where demonstrators spend the night, where they eat, where they sleep. They have parked themselves right here, just outside the parliament building, where they can stop members of parliament and let them know they are unhappy about the unemployment situation here. These men have come from all over the country, from provinces around Afghanistan, and they're not just ordinary Afghans. They are educated. They have university degrees, master's degrees, doctorates. They say they plan to stay here, to demonstrate here, until the government listens to their concerns. Salam alaikum. Jennifer from Al Jazeera. Salam. Salam alaikum. One of their leaders is Abdul Fattah from Panjshir, the province next door to Kabul. But these men are from all over the country. Why are you here? Why did you come to demonstrate here? I'm here, uh, but just, uh, not just for myself. I'm here for my generation. And because of the joblessness. Uh -huh. And what kind of what kind of do you, what kind of job do you want? Uh, I'm uh, graduated from Kabul University. So I, I have studied sociology. Uh, I need to have uh, some research, uh, some as researchers, and I want to work as on research uh, projects. But now I don't have any job. If there there is some. Uh, job to clean something. I'm ready to do that. Becoming a sociologist was not necessarily a bad idea four years ago. When Abdul began his studies, the job market was stronger, and his degree and his English language skills would likely have landed him a decent job with an aid organization or a company working with international donors, paying perhaps $2,500 to $3,000 a month. Why do you think there's a job problem in Afghanistan? I think uh, the government, uh, there's some crisis in our government. They have not any policy to making jobs. Uh, we know some person in our government, they have three, three or uh, four jobs in the same time. But uh, we have uh, lots of joblessness in our country. It's a crisis. Have you tried to find a job? Yes. How? Uh, I tried, uh, I, I went to administration, uh, I uh, went to ministries and uh, I uh, applied for lots of jobs because there's a corruption in the ministries. Uh, if we have not any relationship with them, with the ministries and the leaders and the parliament uh, members, we, uh, when we have not any relationship with them, uh, we are jobless here. So you need you need a connection to get a job. We need a connection, yes. How do you want them to change it? 
the government should pave the way for people if they graduate <coughs> and they are graduated and they gra graduate from uh, universities. Uh, it should uh, pave the way for these people to have a job, a good job. But many young people are leaving Afghanistan. Yes. Would you leave? Would you leave no, Afghanistan? No, no. no. Uh, I don't want to leave my country. I want to live here. Some people, because they have no job, they go uh, to other country. They go uh, to Taliban, to Daesh, uh, because they need to uh, money, they need to food. Uh, the government cannot uh, take them uh, some jobs, so uh, Daesh can take it. Daesh is what Afghans call the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, or ISIL, which has a fledgling presence in Afghanistan. They offer fighters $700 a month, more than twice what the Afghan army pays. That's a generous salary these days. Even though Daesh only operates in a few remote areas and has a reputation for being brutal, the money is a big incentive, especially for young men living in poverty. In uh, some provinces, uh, Taliban uh, pay gold for youngs. Gold? Yes, gold. Uh, uh, I don't know from where they bring the schools, but they pay gold uh, to youngs uh, to be uh, with them. So the problem of no jobs affects security too. Yes, of course. Uh, this is a problem that make a lot, a lot of other problems. They they uh, make some more problems in our country, like um, uh, security. The government is waking up to the situation. In November, President Ashraf Ghani launched a national employment program to give thousands of Afghans job opportunities. The first phase in 12 of the country's 34 provinces is supposed to create short-term jobs for 210,000 Afghans. They'll repair roads, maintain irrigation canals, and work on other infrastructure projects. The structural reforms that will move Afghanistan from an economy that was built on the consumption of foreign aid to one that is built around rising productivity through commercial investment, job creation, and trade. In announcing the plan, Ghani said the economic downturn is directly linked to the withdrawal of NATO troops and 50% fewer NGOs working in the country. His jobs plan, eventually expected to help about 900,000 workers, is part of his strategy to help Afghanistan economically stand on its own. President Ghani says that making new jobs is one of his big priorities, is one of his, one of his big works that he wants to do. Do you trust him? Do you think he can, he can do that? No, because uh, about uh, 13 or 15 years, they, uh, they said we are making policies for unemployment people, but uh, up to now, yet they have, they have not any problem, I think, because Ministry of Labor and uh, Social Affairs said we have not any policy and uh, we don't know how many people are job jobless and how many people have job. If they haven't the, the number, how you can have a policy for us? And what kind of job would you take? What kind of salary uh, are you looking just, for? Just uh, some money for a living. Yes, for just uh, for uh, the basic needs like food and, and uh, uh, home to have a house. How much? How much do you need? A m how much would Maybe you like to make? Maybe two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars. If the country, uh, the government uh, can do that, uh, I will be in our country. I never leave my country because uh, it's my home. A good apartment or house in Kabul for a small family costs about $100 a month. Food is another $90. A doctor's visit can cost about $10. A bus trip, 25 cents. Getting by on that salary would work, but be a stretch. In the West, in Europe, in America, 
If you don't have a job, yes. the government helps you with some money. Yes. Does that happen here? Social. Uh, yeah. Social benefits. Social benefits. Yeah. Uh, we have um, uh, one of our suggestions to government is that uh, work, job, or social benefits. If the government cannot make job for us, so uh, it should. Um, pay us the insurance. Uh, the insurance, the social benefits. But there's nothing right now? N uh, no, exactly there's not anything. Uh, we are here and we want to talk to parliament uh, member. We want to give them this idea. Mm -hmm. And has anyone to come to yes, talk to Yes, to you? have a role uh -huh. for the graduated people. If they are graduated and uh, they graduate from uh, universities, uh, they should ha they should pave the way for them to have a job. If they cannot pave the way for them, uh, it should pay them the money of living, just the money of food, and have a, a house for them. Can you shoot the screen? We decided to show Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, the CEO of the Afghan government, what Abdul had to say about him and the government of which he is a part. Our president's uh, family is in America, in USA, and uh, his, his daughter. You mean? Yes, his daughter uh, and uh, Mr. Abdullah Abdullah. Uh, his family is India. Is in India. They have not uh, the job problem and the food problem. Uh, just the people have this problem. They never think about the people. I would say to that young gentleman and the, to, to, the, uh, to his friends. Uh, when I was uh, his age, uh, I had graduated from the Faculty of Medicine and I, was, I had a lot of opportunities to leave the country. The country was under occupation, but at the same time it was for the sake of the people. I was less than his age, apparently, when I joined the uh, uh, resistance against the Soviets. There are times that uh, country calls on its citizens and uh, there it is the citizens' responsibility as well to see what they can do. Uh, if it is as simple as this, uh, I am graduated and then I, uh, I am not employed today and the, uh, and the leaders don't think about us. It was, it was 30 years ago that uh, because I was thinking for the people uh, that I dedicated my life for the people. I haven't gone after the family business or anything as such, uh, but at the same time, the family, my children also uh, have a right on me, which I, I'm cognizant of that, uh, which uh, uh, I've not been able to, uh, to, to keep the family happy because I'm always away from them. Uh, and uh, all my life I have dedicated my life to the service of the people. It's what I can do for that young gentleman or millions of others which are like them. It's, that's my ultimate goal. Uh, but at the same time, the citizens also should look and see uh, what they can do for their country. Kabul's passport office. This shows you how desperate Afghans are. More than 100,000 fled to Europe in 2015, and the exodus continues. Those with any money are selling their assets to leave. As a result, you can find houses here normally worth half a million dollars on the market for about half that amount. But not everyone here has that option or thinks it's the best choice. So they stay and look for a job. Mariam Gyasi heads one of Afghanistan's biggest recruitment companies, connecting job seekers with companies looking for workers. The area that is expanding nowadays is the ICT section, plus high-level management, like marketing, our business development, and also agriculture, project management, these are those sections that everyone try new thing or there's an opportunity for young generation 
to work or to start a new business in these sections. And are there Afghans out there with the skills for these jobs? Sometimes, yes. They came from with a bachelor degree of agriculture from uh, another company and they, they can find easily a job within one month or within two weeks. So based on a uh, market, these sections are more uh, like they are more easy to find them jobs. And what about the other Afghans? What, what can they do? They have to update their skill. And uh, like uh, an IT manager of last year, last year can't be an IT manager in 2015 or 2016. And what about supply and demand now? So when, when you have one job opening, how many applications do you get for one job opening? For one uh, position, I've received more than 150 uh, resumes uh, for the same position. Every, and everybody uh, qualified? Everyone was not qualified, even the guard, the cleaner, and all that. They applied for the same job that might, might be, we uh, be shortlisted for another uh, vacancy. What was it like two years ago? Same thing? No, actually, it was different. It was like uh, we received qualified person or might be semi-qualified for a position. Only like 60 job seekers uh, were applying for the vacant position. But as I said, that since the number of projects, the number of businesses, and we have done um, something like research on, uh, on our database that uh, there are more than 3,000 employers registered that the number of like f more than 40% uh, of the businesses and projects were closed by 2014. That's why everyone got the jobless and they are eager to work even uh, their salary was high, but nowadays they're eager to work for like less um, amount of salary. We've come across town to see one of Miriam's biggest clients. He hires people not just for his company, but for other companies as well. His name's Fahim Didar, and his office is in here. Fahim Didar's company is called Argaiz, which translates to effect. And that's what he's hoping to have on Afghan businesses. You've been hiring, is that right? You've been hiring new people? Yes, yes. Actually, uh, our company has been hiring. And apart from what we hire for our company, uh, we also hire for uh, our clients. Because when we do project assessments, when we do uh, management projects, we see that uh, if there is need for employing new people there, so we also employ for them. And what kind of skills are you looking for? What kind of jobs are you hiring for? Well, actually, since we are working with uh, clients of any type who are in the business, uh, as I said, whether manufacturing or service or even restaurants, uh, so we hire from different uh, sets of skills. So we hire laborers and skilled laborers. Then we also hire up to the general managers. Uh, and uh, we are looking for normal people who can just uh, cook some kind of dishes. Then we can also, uh, we are also looking for uh, some people who should have MBA degrees. So this is a uh, different type. Uh, so it means that through our company, uh, people can get employment opportunity at whatever level they are. And unemployment is very high here, so is it easy for you to find people for jobs? Nowadays, unemployment rate is uh, becoming very high, and uh, the reason is uh, the withdrawal of the foreign aids. Uh, but still, uh, we can find good people here, and uh, whenever we cannot find people directly ourselves, we call on the special companies who are uh, doing HR services. Uh, so we are asking them to help us in hiring the right people. So an unskilled labor, presumably easy to find in Afghanistan. Yeah, that's something which is very easy to find. 
Uh, but still, even if you find unskilled labor, then you have to give them some kind of training. And even unskilled or uh, more here, because in the last 13 years, people have been engaged in a lot of studies, both inside Afghanistan and outside Afghanistan. We have around 90 universities here now. So even that will not be a problem to find the skilled people here. But it's not all bad news around here. In fact, there are new businesses being set up and they are looking to hire. Nowadays, uh, we can see that the consumer market is growing, whether it be a chain of supermarkets, chain of restaurants, and a chain of small fast food centers. So these kind of businesses increasing. At the same time, the level of, uh, uh, compared to uh, before, the level of manufacturing companies are also increasing. And uh, this is a good news, uh, according to me, for the economy of Afghanistan. So this, these all sectors are growing very well, but not very fast, but still growing. What, um, what would you advise a young worker or a young person here who wants to find a job? What skills would you advise that they need in this job market? Well. Uh, I think uh, uh, based on our evaluation, we see that uh, our universities are producing all finance people or HR people. And uh, in the lower level, we are unique technicians, like say in the car repair industry, you don't have good technicians here. And mechanics. if you go to so mechanics. Yeah, mechanics. You don't have good mechanics here. At the same time, when you go to a production plant like Coca-Cola, there you see that you don't have good skilled labor to operate the machines very well. And this is, uh, this is something that apart from those, uh, what I say, white collar jobs, uh, you n we also need in this uh, area too many people. But at the same time, uh, what I believe is that uh, our people should, a young person from now onwards should try to get a skill. Things are starting uh, for real economy of Afghanistan from now, I believe. However, for people like Abdul with his sociology degree, there are challenges here and now, and there is just no quick or easy solution. I'm here uh, to tell my government I'm a young people, I am graduated, I can do something in my country, I don't want to leave here, please uh, take me a job. Please give me a job. I want to work for my country. I never want to leave my country. <laughs>